Welcome to the Newman Center. This evening we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent as well as a baccalaureate mass for our graduating seniors. Tonight's mass is celebrated by, is concelebrated by all of the priests for the Newman Center. Please silence your electronic devices and please stand and greet those around you asking each other how you can pray for each other this evening. We're gathered here today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your Special welcome to all of our graduates for this baccalaureate mass. As we prepare to celebrate this liturgy, we call to mind God's grace and love and mercy in our lives. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned 
in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ was, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Thus says the Lord, you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, too small to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth has born and the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord, his God, and they shall remain. From now, his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth. He shall be peace. The word of the Lord. Shepherd of Israel, hear me. From your throne upon the cherubim shine forth. Rouse your power. If your face shine upon us, then we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. 
Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted. The Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. Lord, make us turn to you. Show your face, we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you. Show your face, we shall be saved. May your health be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Show your face, we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you. Show your face, we shall be saved. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocausts and sin offerings, you took no delight. Then I said, as is written of me in the scroll, behold, I come to do your will, O God. First he says, sacrifices and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? 
For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The gospel, the good news of the Lord. Today, on this fourth Sunday of Advent, certainly the graduates feel very blessed and that they're graduating, and, and parents, no more uh, college bills ahead, so, except for maybe paying things off. But beyond the obvious blessing of finishing up the, these, these years of school, how blessed do we feel spiritually? This on the fourth Sunday of Advent, we're always given this image of the visitation of Mary and Elizabeth, two unexpected, two miraculous pregnancies. One, you know, a very young teen, teenage woman, you know, not yet, only betrothed to Joseph, not yet consummated with a marriage, and Elizabeth in her uh, old age, coming together, very pregnant with hope and expectation. We're given that image on the, uh, on the fourth Sunday of Advent as a way of preparing ourselves for Christmas, to celebrate the Incarnation. How does this image help us to do that in that final week of preparation here that we are able to have this year? You know, as we're aware, you know, when a woman is pregnant, she is, has to, she's aware of the life growing within her. And she has to be aware of what she eats and, and, and drinks and all, and, and caring and nurturing that life within her. And that life, you know, grows within her. The potential for that birth happening nine months from that moment of conception. We, in a way, are all, you know, invited by God to consider how we are called, you know, Mary in a very special way, brought to birth Jesus Christ into the world. And Elizabeth was part of that, that whole salvation story too, bringing John the Baptist who would proclaim, you know, go ahead and proclaim the Messiah is coming into the world. He knew in this story right from the very beginning, he leaped in her womb. And that was, you know, this image for, for, for the Jewish people, this image of John the Baptist leaping in, in uh, Elizabeth's womb, you know, called to mind, you know, David dancing in front of the Ark of the Covenant when it was brought into Jerusalem. Mary is the new Ark of the Covenant of Jesus Christ, carrying, you know, God within her. And Elizabeth knew that and recognized that and proclaimed that, blessed are you, but who, are, who am I that the mother of the Lord should come to me? She asked that question in, in, humble, in, in humility. And yet, you know, we, the Lord comes to us each time we gather together in this Eucharist. And each time we receive Jesus Christ in this Eucharist, we are, you know, contain Christ within us. Pregnant with the possibilities of bringing Christ out into the world God's grace, God's love, God's mercy that we receive in this Eucharist and that we call to bring that out into the world. Now, for those of you who are graduating, you know, you spent a lot more than just nine months, you know, getting to this moment. And yet, it is a moment, too, of, of transition. A moment of, of, of being sent out into the world just as, 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 as Mary and Elizabeth were called by God for a special mission. You, too, have been called and graced with the opportunities that your degree is now offering you to go out and transform the world. And that transformation of the world happens, you know, not, you know, and has been happening during your time here. And certainly, you know, that, that your participation in your faith, and any time we all participate in our faith, we're bringing about that transformation of the world. And yet, we have those moments of extra opportunity of how God calls each and every one of us to bring Christ out into the world, to bring that message of God's salvation, the God's kingdom of peace, of justice into the world, using the gifts and talents that God has blessed us with, the knowledge that you gain through your studies, the knowledge that you gain through growing in your faith during your time here, 
you have that to bring out into the world to make a difference. And each and every one of us, it's, it, it celebrates with you today in that and uh, praying for you in this transition of making a difference in the world. We gathered here today on this fourth Sunday of Advent as we prepare to celebrate the incarnation of, of God becoming one with us. We're aware of his presence even now in one another. Just as Elizabeth was so aware of Jesus' presence in, in the Blessed Mother, so too are we called to be aware of the dignity uh, and, 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 and humanity and divinity. Like Jesus says, the kingdom of God is within us, within each and every one of, uh, of us around us here. But especially the most difficult person. You know, our faith calls us to see Christ in the most difficult person in our lives those people in the street, those people that are different than us. How can we allow ourselves, like Elizabeth, to proclaim how blessed are we to be in the company of another be human being, of another human person? Can we recognize that? Until we're able to recognize that, you know, the piece that we're preparing ourselves to celebrate, yeah, the incarnation, isn't going to be able to, we aren't going to be able to fully celebrate that unless we are able to be reconciled with one another, our family members, friends, and the world around us. Today, we pray in, in thanksgiving for our graduates. We pray in thanksgiving for all the ways God blesses us to be able to go out into the world. So today, we are indeed called to recognize how blessed indeed are we who God comes to us in this Eucharist. God comes to us in a in, in our humanity. God comes to us in so many ways, and especially in the most ti difficult times in our lives. God is there for us, transforming us to God's love, mercy, and grace. stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the begotten Son of God, one of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary. Amen. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. With faith like that of Mary and Elizabeth, we bring our prayers before the Lord. bishops, priests, deacons, religious, and all who serve in the church, we pray to the Lord.
for the leaders of nations that they promote life, peace, and justice, and work together for the common good, we pray to the Lord. recognize God's presence in those around us and treat others with dignity and respect, we pray to the Lord. we discern how best to minister to one another, we pray to the Lord. For those who are sick, and for all who are suffering or experiencing hardships in any way, we pray to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. For our own needs and intentions, those in our book of intentions, those in the silence of our hearts, and those that we now speak aloud. Pray to the Lord. Loving God, hear our prayers and answer them according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, my sisters and brothers, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glories without end, we acclaim. indeed holy O lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit he give you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same holy spirit graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas More and St. John Henry Newman, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, 
with your servant Francis our Pope, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, and O oh God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. confidence, we join together in prayer in the words our Savior gave. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day. that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us share that peace with one another. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you send under my roof. 
but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast of our salvation draws ever nearer, we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Okay. A number of announcements. Uh, our Christmas Mass schedule. Um, uh, join us uh, this week to celebrate the Nativity of the Lord. Our mass, uh, Christmas Mass schedule, including virtual Masses and parking information, is now available at BuckeyeCatholic.com and as well as in the bulletin. There will be incense at the 10 p.m. and 10 a.m. Masses. Uh, Christmas break schedule, no Sunday 6 and 9 p.m. Masses till January 9th, and no daily Mass from December 27th through January 7th. Uh, in case you missed it, 
uh, interest, if you're interested in owning a piece of Newman Center history, um, we, uh, since we've begun replacing the seating in the church, we have a limited number of the vintage chairs available. So some are still in good condition, have a lot of life in them. So check out BuckeyeCatholic.com for more information about uh, purchasing a bit of vintage uh, Newman history. Deepen Your Faith Wednesdays, starting January 12th, Deepen Your Faith Wednesdays, will start the Gospel of Luke, part two series. And more information and the registration link can be found at BuckeyeCatholic.com. And if you're around tomorrow after the noon mass, we're decorating the church for Christmas if you want to help with that. And for those of you who will be away for our break, have a very blessed Christmas and a new year and happy new years and prayers for safe travels. And now we want to recognize all of our graduates. So, so graduates, please come up here for a, uh, a photo op and uh, uh, so that we can congratulate you. <laughs> come all the way up here. Yeah. And Brother Paul's priest, gather around here. So congratulations. Thank you for blessing us with your time here and we'll remember to keep us in your prayers and we'll be keeping you in our prayers we have a little graduation uh, bag for you out in the uh, lane avenue lobby so if you uh, before you leave stop by and pick that up so and may almighty god bless you father son and holy spirit and let us all stand for the final closing blessing and <laughs> you can press us out with us so May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hey.